Hello everyone, I'm DJ Riggs. Barry Bakken. And we're management's artists. Welcome to American Salon Live Feed. Oh, we have someone's here. Door. This is what it's all about, guys. We're just going to be going through some of our latest trends and techniques and give you guys a sneak peek into what we're going to be working on at IBS for our masterclass. I'll let Barry start it off by doing color on her model. Then from there, we'll be swapping models out. So you'll see some coloring techniques and some cutting. So Barry, you want to take over? Yeah, thank you so much, Steve. All right. So basically, with our education at Main Engine Artists, what we do is everything is based on the trends and the trends inside of the greater industry. So for today, what we're going to be doing is sharing a sneak peek, as DJ said, into our IBS master class. So we're going to be going over two of the season's newest trends, and one of them is called Obilux, which is what we're working on with Angel here. So Obilux is inspired by more of an Asian influence, you think, you know, like the obi um, belts that in the Japanese culture, as well as a very luxury feel. So it's kind of a combination of loungewear meets activewear, kind of nightwear as daywear type of feeling in terms of fashion. Now, how do you interpret that into cut and color, and how is that vital to what you do in the salon every day? What we do is roll that into a consultation style. So when I was speaking to Angel, you know, I talked to her a lot about type of tones that she liked and also what her vibe was for the season. So after that we decided, all right, she's going to be perfect for Obilux. So what I've already done previously is a little bit of the pre-work for you. So you can see that I have sectioned off basically a crescent shape. So starting about halfway on the head, but this is the balancing point that you want to find because you want to make sure that a little bit of this hair is going to fall over as negative space. So I have a C curvature into low recession on each side. Now in the back, I've already done a block color. So that was a level four, and we'll just call that a dark raspberry. So level four, red violet. And that's what I'm placing in here at the roots. That's just with 20 volume. And I'm gonna quickly do the roots, and then we're gonna do a color blocking type of sectioning pattern through the front. So the tones that I'm using, and what I've done previously as well, is you can tell that the, her hair is slightly damp on the ends. What I'm doing is basically toning what we've already done. So the last time that Angel had her color done was in March, right Angel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, March. So basically what I did was just clean off some of the old color that was on there. I didn't really want to lift. She kind of had a blue violet type of feel and that's where I just used some lightener and a shampoo cap, which so basically shampoo, lightener, and water and developer. And what we've done is just clean that off so we can get a nice pure tone. So as I'm working through here now, what I just want to do is basically work in where all of that natural is. So, and you know, just doing this very carefully so that we make sure that we don't apply too much product because sometimes what can happen when you're doing this type of root shading technique is that you will end up adding a little bit too much color. And what happens with that is you end up going past the point of where you need to be. And all of a sudden the color that you were supposed, just supposed to be on the roots is all the way on the ends. So in this case, we want to be just really specific with that. So I'm applying just to the root area only. And you know, as we all know with reds, they tend to stain the most. So I'm just being very careful around the hairline. Those little hairs, they color a little bit more easily as well. So there's no need to oversaturate in this case. So after I get this on, I'm also going to be working with two alternate tones. So Larry, if you want to get in here just to show them. So this is the dark raspberry. And then we have a peacock kind of a peacock green, and then a midnight violet. So those are the tones that I'm gonna be alternating through the front of Angel's hair in a color blocking sectioning pattern. So what I wanna think about when I'm doing that is the end result that DJ is gonna be doing with the haircut, because what we're actually gonna do for you guys is basically do two mini demos. So basically I'm gonna do a color and DJ is gonna cut, and then we're gonna take a little half an hour break and come back at you with part two. So hopefully it's a good recap to the end of your evening. And uh, I just want to say hello to everyone out there. Thanks for joining us. A lot of you guys, we're based in New York City. So, you know, we have global education and we go around a lot. And we really love American Salon and other networks like that and such for sharing with you guys the live demonstrations. Right now, what you can see what Barry is doing, I'm going to be doing some finishes that's going to really work well with inside of this type of a shape. So you guys feel free to ask questions, anything you want to know. Get to know us. We want to get to know you out there. So Barry, you can go ahead and take it away. Thanks, DJ. So yeah, as DJ was saying, you know, we're really excited to be sharing this with you tonight. And 
really give you a sneak peek into what our education is about. So with these trends, basically the color palette is inspired by, remember I said that kind of evening, like night wear into day wear, that kind of evening meets luxury. So that's inspired in these tones as well. And thinking about Japanese fabrics, like in the obi, the really like rich satin tones and real, that type of texture is basically what I'm creating with this color blocking because the difference in the color palette, even though they are different tones, they're quite similar in level. So it's gonna be more of a tonal shift rather than really PC or very blocky color, which is why I wanna take larger sections when I start to work. All right, I wanna say hello to Kathy. Hey, Kathy. Kathy Hammond's out there, as well as Johnny Bayless for joining us. And uh, Myrna, thanks for checking us out right here. You know, Barry, like a lot of times when it comes to like the sectioning patterns, mm -hmm. sometimes we, um, you know, we do color and cut. So in other words, Barry does all of the color and I do all of the cut. But sometimes just noticing these sectioning patterns gives a great insight to you as the hair cutter of how you're gonna go in and approach and maximize the flow of that front area. Because inside of her haircut, we're gonna have more of a focal point with a fringe. And then with that going to more of a shaggy or more of a rock and roll curl happening throughout the crown as well as the perimeter area. So. Okay, so you can see, thanks CJ, you can see here what I've done is the root color is in, but when I go to comb through the ends, I only get the ends because if I were to work from the roots to the ends, then I'm going to drag all that color down and I don't want to have that happen. So what I'm going to do is start off the edge of my section and I'm going to take small C curvature sections. So everything is going to be working within C curvatures. And you can see from her pre-existing color that she had areas of lightness. Now, the blue, the Midnight Violet, and the Peacock Green that I'm working with, those are direct deposit colors. So I've mixed them and made them specifically for Angel's hair with combining a few different tones. But with that, what we know about that is that it's only going to deposit, so it's not going to lift. So one, I want to make sure that I'm coming all the way to the new growth area. And two, I'm keeping in mind that I'm going to work with a pre-existing color. So instead of trying to lighten this whole thing and then take it back darker again, which ends up being something that washes out quite easily. What I'm gonna do is actually use the variation in tone to help me blend the technique. Uh, very like, so let's talk about the foils right quick and like how important is that towards making sure that you work with the inside of the section. Well, with the foil, you know, you could do this with, you know, a mesh if you wanted to. You could also use a different type of foil, but I feel like the most important thing with the foil is using it to your advantage on how to fold it and how to work with it. So. In this case, what I'm doing is working with three different tones. And in that, I wanna make sure that I can tell what's what because it's quite easy to get lost in our sections. So you can see that's my first section there, right? That was the green. So now I'm gonna work a C curvature right next to that and I'm gonna work that midnight violet. So I'm almost doing like a brick lane technique in a sense, but it's a little bit more abstract. So you're just gonna work from each direction. So an important aspect of this technique and excuse me, I actually used the blue, the Midnight Violet here. So now I'm gonna work in with that Peacock Green. And that's exactly what I was saying about the foils, why it's important. So I'm gonna know that with all of my Midnight Violet, I'm gonna fold it up like you see this one here. And then all of my Peacock Green, what I'm gonna do is fold it vertically. So I'm basically gonna be color coding my work as I go. So I don't have to keep checking what I did last. And I, it's quite easy to keep track of where I am in the sectioning pattern. All right, great. Hello from Glasgow. We have Glasgow in. We have uh, our profe. Hello to you as well. Who else we have? Mariana. Hello. Hello from Hazel Green. Glad you're loving the demos here. You guys feel free to ask Barry any questions that you have. Once again, we will be putting on a master class at IBS Las Vegas this year, so be sure to check us out for that. And you can go to that, their website for that, or you can also check on social media. Right now, Barry, I notice you're moving into this front area. This is going to be great because it's going to give some dimension and give me a focal point for when I come back in with the fringe area of the haircut. Absolutely, and that's what we always try to do is, is create a synergy between the haircut and the hair color. You know, sometimes it can happen where it's really strong color and it's a really strong cut, and sometimes they end up fighting for attention. So it's all about creating that harmony between it so the look is what gets the attention, not one or the other. So basically, you can see here that I'm starting to work with that coating of foils. So this is the Midnight Violet, this is the Peacock Green, and then on the areas that are the dark raspberry, what I'll do is I'll just leave them out. So what's important when you're doing this is you want to make sure that as you're working through, you're not putting one color right next to the same color that it was before. So for example, I don't want to put another Midnight Blue right here. 
because then I'm building up too much of a point there. So I'm gonna go in now with another C curvature and do the opposite. So I'm gonna be working with the peacock green. All right, so we have a question from Gabby. Mm -hmm. Hello, Gabby. The question is, what did you guys use uh, for the roots? Thanks, Gabby. So for the roots, what we use, I'm using Schwarzkopf for the roots, and I've mixed that at a little bit of a higher mixing ratio. So I've mixed that actually three to one, and what that's gonna do for me is give me a more translucent color. That's what I'm really looking for here. I don't want it to be a super heavy deposit. I wanna see it be a little bit more translucent. So that was a level four red violet with 20 volumes on the roots. And then what I'm using is just a strict semi-permanent here. So I've mixed Pravana and I've mixed a few different tones within the Pravana to get these peacock green and midnight violet. So what's important, especially when you're working on damp hair, is that you want to make sure that you're kind of moving this around within the foil or within the mesh because it's quite easy to think that you've covered all of it. And also what you want to think about is, you know, we're just depositing with this. So the areas that you see that have been pre-lightened with Angel, that will really pick up the true tone. But you'll have a variation in that tone where it goes over the pre-existing red. All right, I just want to give a big shout out, not to mess with the education that's happened with Barry. So we want to say what's up, Bayside NY. We have Texas in the building. We have Mexico. Nice. Hello, everyone is like checking in right now. This is really great. Pensacola, Florida. Hello, thanks for checking out Main Entrance Artist Education. Right now we have Barry Bakken just working on our trend-based education that has a focal point to the trends. And this particular trend is called... OB Lux. OB Lux. So OB Lux, guys, you want to find out more about it, check us out at IBS. We'll be there really going and showcasing these trends and also giving you guys access to trend reports that you guys will see later on throughout the, uh, the stream and what we'll be doing with those. All right, so I'll let Barry catch you guys up. Great. Thanks, CJ. So you can see here that I'm just moving forward with this color blocking. And sometimes it can feel like a little bit intimidating because it doesn't have an exact pattern. So it's probably going to be slightly different every time you do it. But that's why coating your foils is such an easy way to keep track of what you're doing, as well as, you know, you just want to look what, at what the pre-existing hair is, and instead of trying to erase everything and start over, use it to your advantage. And we have a question like, uh, this is uh, about the C-section. Why, why was it uh, important? Great. Why, why is it better to take a C-section? That's from Rosalie. Rosalie, um, and you know, the reason for the C-section or the C curvature section is basically that I want to create a softness. So I don't want a line that's as harsh as a straight line that's going to create areas of harsh separation. So that curve is going to help it blend one into the other. But the reason that I chose to do a C curvature rather than a zigzag is it's going to give me more dimension and more block coloring than a zigzag. A zigzag is going to be more integrated. A C curvature is kind of halfway in between a straight line and a zigzag line. And that comes from inspiration from the trend as well, because basically with Obilux, you want to think, you know, we're thinking about those nighttime tones, really nice and rich. So taking those half moon crescent sections works in with that. So now I've gotten to a point where, you know, I'm kind of not sure where I would want to go. So what you can do is just start at the other side of your section, because sometimes you have to go halfway and then meet it on the other side. All right, we have a question from uh, Ariel. Mm -hmm. Hello, Ariel. The question is, when blending the colors, are you combing down root color or overlapping? Good question. Great question, and I'm actually doing both. So you're blending in from both sections. Sometimes, as colorists, we get really nervous about having the colors touch each other, but really, that's the whole key to making the technique successful. So you can see here that I'm kind of scooching my root color down, making sure I have a nice transition into that pre-existing lightness. And then also what I'm going to do is go ahead and then feather up with my other tone. So I'm going to work with that peacock green now. And I'm going to use, I like to use these smaller, more detailed brushes because that way it gives me a little bit more time and a little bit more range to have a soft bristle to blend that in together. So you can see I'm using the majority of my product on the lengths and ends. And then as I start to blend up, I'm just softening that through. So the key is really, if you can't see where it starts or ends when the color is on, you're guaranteed to have a good blend when the color is off. So my next section now, what I have to look at, right, is when you're starting to end your section, you gotta look at where everything is coming together. So here I have my dark raspberry, here I have my midnight violet, I have my peacock green. So, all right, I gotta just figure out now where to do each section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of my dark raspberry here. 
and I'm going to just make sure that these are all C curvatures. So you have less area to work with now, so you have to be a little bit more specific in how you're choosing to apply these. And actually, looking at it again, I'm actually going to use my Midnight Violet here. So you can see all of the sections that are placed in this longer foil, those are the peacock green. The sections that are placed in the folded foil are the midnight violet, and then the sections that are just out, that's the negative space. That's what makes the whole technique work. And those are just left and tucked behind. All right, guys. So right now as we're moving through, so think about this, guys. I'm gonna be coming back on another face, uh, Facebook live feed for American Salon, and you're gonna see me take this young lady and go ahead and cut the shape in on her. So you guys can kind of see how the haircut and the coloring complements each other. And I think that's the whole thing when it comes to doing these type of uh, collaborative uh, situations in the salon or in show situations. It's making sure that we both understand where we're coming from, but then matching up in a particular place. And that place is gonna be the trend for us. So be sure to check us out uh, on our other live feed just to go into some of the haircuts that we're gonna finish in. Absolutely, so I'm just finishing up now and then we're actually gonna switch models and Dita's gonna be working on Alyssa who I've started to pre-color. So just to recap what I've done, to start off the technique, just taking a C curvature section from low recession to low recession, working towards the crown, but not all the way to the crown. You wanna come about to the radial, just underneath that. Everything in the back is block colored with my dark raspberry. So again, that was a level four, red violet with 20 volume. Now, after that, I've root shaded or just done the very roots with my um, dark raspberry again. And then from there, I'm taking these crescent shaped sections and I'm working three different tones. And you can see these are all quite similar in level, but they're quite different in the tonality. So what that's gonna create is a rich finish. Again, with that Obilux type of vibe, basically we're trying to create those really rich satin luxury finishes. With color, quite often, we don't think about it as a fabric, but the hair is a fabric. So depending on our color choice, we're really able to create a velvet texture, a silk texture, a, a very matte texture. So just don't forget about that aspect of it as well. And that's where the trends really start to come into play. Because sometimes when you know we're working with collection work, it's great and it's inspiring, but not all the time is it completely viable for our salon clients. They might like the same formula they've been getting for years. But with the trend reports, what we do is we bring in all of that inspiration into not only the overall look, but the color palette, we bring that into the sectioning pattern, into the finishes. So you have the control to really be able to take your clients in different directions and have complete control of that. So as an end result, what you're gonna see here is a really luxury combination of night tones, really rich and dark. And basically what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get her processed and then DJ is gonna start to work on Alyssa. So I'll just talk about Alyssa a little bit before he comes over. So Alyssa has a natural level eight. Uh, yesterday we pre-lightened her roots and just made it a really nice clean blonde. So is gonna be working in the Millimash trend. So he'll tell you a little bit more about it, but it's a really nice mashup of masculine and feminine, a little bit of military and a little bit of flourish. So you'll really see that come through. So I'm gonna take uh, Angel away now and get, pass it over to DJ. All right, come on over Angel. All right guys, so we're just transitioning as you can see. So I'm just gonna to talk to you guys just a little bit about what I'm gonna be doing on Alyssa's hair. So as you can see, she's already in the short world, so we wanna make sure that since the hair is already on the short side, we wanna give it just a bit more of an exaggerated texture, so to speak. And when it comes to like the Miller Mash, it's, it's really creating more of that type of feeling, a bit more grungy, but still with a certain type of blend to it, because it, you know, when you think like military, it's still it's some, a certain type of control. So it's mixing up that control along with some of that thrashed out movement that's gonna happen on the top. So I'm just gonna start off with a little bit of the Serene. This is more like a um, protection prep spray. That's really great, just to give the hair a bit of control. And it's the Serene hydrating this. And I just wanna spray that everywhere before I really get started with the shape. A lot of times it's good to prep the hair before you go in with any particular type of cutting technique. So we're just gonna come over here. And just starting out, 
by actually just combing the hair, getting some control. As you can see, the way Barry colored the hair has a nice feeling in it. She's gonna come back and do just more of a different approach inside of that, just to kind of really make the trend really pop off a bit more. So you can see once again, you notice we keep using the, the clean term of C curvature. So even with this, just C curving, just around that parietal ridge. And the reason for that is because what I'm gonna do is kind of almost create like this peak scenario where the hair is just kind of flowing from there, but then you have this nice clean control coming here in this back area. We're just gonna wet that down a bit more. So you can see as I was talking to you guys about a little bit before DJ brought Alyssa over, it's a really nice clean blonde. And I think that's that hard part to get when we're doing a pre-lightener is getting that just exact level of not too ashy, not too warm, and no banding. So what we're going to be adding into Alyssa's hair a little bit later is actually using some session color, which is something that DJ and I like to do quite a bit, where we're working with more of a temporary type of vibe. So I'm excited to see where he takes this shape. So as you guys can see, I'm just working with diagonal back sections and then point cutting. And this point cutting is basically working palm to palm and just making sure the head is in the right place for you and tilt it a bit and then just continue on working with that. And once again, these are slight diagonal back sections and I'm just going to comb it up and just check out the previous and then connect. The reason for this gang is just so that I get the hair directed to where it's almost like she can comb it back really nice. Just more of a slickster, slickster approach to it. And you know, notice whenever you see like people that's really running inside of the uh, militant circle, so to speak, or military, you, you see when they use the gels and the pomades to kind of really create that slick, slickster effect but you're gonna see how we actually do the top area and then thrash the texture on top of that. So it really gives us a nice contrast. And one of the reasons that we feel like trend is so important inside of everything that we do is really recognizing the greater industry. So not only what's happening in terms of trends inside of hairdressing or hair color specifically, but more so what's happening in the greater industry. So what's happening in fashion, what's happening in music, what's happening in film and art, because they actually all run in the same inspiration trends. So we really believe that whether you're 18 or you're 80, trend doesn't have an age. And there's a, there's a difference between being trendy and being on trend. So this is all about really being on trend and being able to take the control with your clients and really be able to guide them into their next uh, phase of where they want their hair to be, what they want their lifestyle to be, while you maintain the creative control. All right guys, so we're just kind of working this all the way down. As you can see, just combing everything to that guide and working my way, decreasing in length. So as I get around that head shape, you'll notice I'm still point cutting, palm to palm, but I'm decreasing in length. And guys, please feel free if you have any questions about the type of technique that DJ is working on or, or anything at all, just let us know because we're really excited to be here sharing with you a sneak peek into our master class. All right, and then in the front area, guys, we're just gonna do some carving. So you can notice that I'm holding the blades where the blades are quite like this normally, right? I'm just gonna take them and reverse them and then come like this. What this is gonna do is allow me to actually work towards myself. So now when I'm working on the face, you just notice I get more control. So you see? Giving me just that slight edge that happens right there inside of the shape. And then from here, we're just gonna do just some slight detailing. Scissor over comb, just to kind of soften up this. And Cheryl just had a question regarding what I used to lighten um, Alyssa's hair. So we mm -hmm. used uh, Schwarzkopf Blonde Me and only 10 volume because that lightener is quite powerful. So I don't need to use a high volume because remember she's a level eight. So it's just all about being patient and being thorough. All right, guys, so as I have this side, what I'm going to do is just blow dry this area a little bit. And just making sure that I use the comb. I'm just going to blow this just what happens. I can let the roots dry up a bit, and then from there, come in and take out just a bit more weight in certain areas. So if you guys feel free to contact us, you know, by just like, you can email us or you can like post right now, just to kind of go over some of these details that happens when you're working certain type of looks, you know? Especially if you guys are gonna ever shoot your work or kind of enter any type of award scenario. It's just really good to really know how to capture the details whenever you're working. And one of the key things is like from working from wet to dry, just making sure that you can really monitor that look all the way around. 
All right, so now that we have that, just taking a look at how much lift we're getting at the roots, and then we'll detail around that ear area just a bit. And then on the crown area, notice the hope of the position, just control slicing, just collapsing some of that weight. And DJ, this is a technique that I've seen you do a lot, and how do you feel comfortable having the control to work that way? I think just practicing, guys, you know what I mean? Put in your hours of just understanding how to open and close that blade. And the key thing with this, the trick is to, I'm making sure that the bottom of the blade grazes the head first before I close the blade. That way, it makes sure that I'm not diving right at my client. So it's really key to keep that circle in motion with it, like this. And as far as how I'm holding it, it's just my pinky wrapped in and then my thumb coming in. And then just that rotation, giving me that control and I can actually see what's happening with it. So it's just another form of channeling. So, but definitely practice on that before you put that on your client. We had a few new people join us. Hi, Brenda. And also, Valerie has a question about the texture of Alyssa's hair. Is it fine? Is it thick? Good question. Well, you know what? Since the hair is colored and it's bleached, right? The thing is, is that it does change the peroxidity of the hair. So it does have a mixed texture that's happening with it. So even though it's fine to the touch, but it can build up and become that full heaviness and really start to really distort uh, that texture a little bit. But right now, you guys can just see, I'm just lifting her up, just giving her a bit more of the squareness, right? So that's the key thing inside of that trend when you think military is like something that's a bit more square, a bit more controlled. And then we're gonna make this area just to where that can still be combed, but blend into everything else, therefore giving her a nice feeling where she can change the hair different ways. We're just gonna C-curve on the opposite side, doing the same technique that we created on the opposite. And Rosalie was wondering, would you describe those sections as vertical C-curves? Well, you know what? The, um, the sections that I'm taking inside of it is slight diagonal back sections. Now, the actual canvas that I'm doing is C curvature, and that's just to panel off that section of the head shape. But then inside of that, I'm doing diagonal back, so even though that the hair falls in the C curvature dynamic, it's still pushing, going towards the back of the head shape. So it gives really a nice feel with that. We're also really excited, you know, IBS offers a ton of education, and in Las Vegas, we're also gonna be doing a main stage presentation, where we're gonna share with you guys a little bit more of the editorial side of what we do because DJ and I have a lot of uh, experience throughout the industry, whether it's you know teaching basic curriculums or working more editorial and shooting and doing runway shows and that type of thing. So we're going to be creating uh, laundry on the hat reimagined. So I, it's hard to explain, but I hope you guys tune in. Yeah, you know what? When it comes to that, you know, guys, think about how hats play such an important role into society, right? And so we created this concept of like just going through all some of the iconic shapes uh, that we can think of where hats were mainly known uh, around the world and then put that into actual looks that are wearable looks. So that's what you guys are gonna see is our interpretation of how do we make those type of iconic shapes like the shape of a sport cap or, or a top hat or something like that, turning those shapes into actual wearable looks. And I think that's the brilliance of hat dressing is that you can really you know, take things to your own way, your own perception of, of how you see everything, right? So just continuing along, doing the diagonal back sections, you can see, look at my comb placement, guys. You notice how I comb the hair straight out, 90, and then just moving the comb out the way, and then working my sections coming all the way down into that side area. And once again, what I'm creating here is just actually creating the squareness that we're looking for. And you notice that diagonal back just makes the hair want to flow backwards quite nicely. As you can see from the way her hair flows here. Just going to continue going with it. And DJ, how do you decide on making it square or round or, or the angles that you're taking in terms of is that head shape or face shape? I think it, it, it's one of those things when it, when it comes to like whether or not I'm going to make something square, you definitely want to think of the jawline. You know, the jawline of the face can, can really kind of define whether or not you should put something that's too shaped structurally on someone that has a round jawline. You know, because what happens, they just look like Gumby, isn't it? So, you know about that? So, with that being said, we're just gonna come in, and with that, just making sure that I create softness, but I'm matching it up to her jawline, but I'm also thinking of her top, how is that top gonna flow and blend into everything else? So that's quite important as well as I'm working. So we're getting into the last sections. And DJ Nisa was wondering what blade length you have? I stick with a seven for the most part. And I think, you know, for me it works well. I mean, I have a few different sizes, but, you know, I'm someone that I love using the full length of the blade when I'm cutting. 
But as you notice, you notice when I'm working, I'm still guiding the blade from the front part. So it's kind of giving me the control of a shorter blade, but with the movement of a longer one. And I think that's what's really key for me of why I choose to go with a longer blade. You got some hashtag beautiful blade work. Oh, thank you. I, I, I'm glad you guys enjoy my blade work. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not on rollerblades. It'll be unlucky. So <laughs> with that, coming down into the nape, guys, notice the point cutting. Just keep making sure that it flows, you know? I think a lot of times people point cut and it's too tight, so you might as well club cut it if you're going to go that tight with it. So just keeping that looseness in it, you know? I'm just going to slow it down so you guys can just see. I'm still skipping over and just kind of creating that softness. Because I think femininity is still key inside of working such a trend that has such a strong connotation when you think of it like that. All right, in the back area, I'm just going to come across. And DJ, is there a way that you are able to keep it so neat and perfect without using clips? I think using product. Prep sprays is, are great. You know, with my line, I have uh, EDA Cosmetics for hair, and, and the prep spray is meant to have enough hole in it to where I can really control. So as you can see with this, Right? And this just kind of keeps reactivating the hair, but it's still touchable, you know? So I think the rose water is what's in that, just using that just to really help control that hair, but make sure that it's moisturized. And that product is fantastic for lightened hair. It has a balance of protein and moisture, so it helps to replace everything that's removed or compromised when you're coloring as well, and even out porosity. Um, Melinda is wondering if you would cut coarse hair at a different angle. You know what? Great question. I think. Uh, the angle, it would depend. With the coarse hair, how much movement does it have? Depending on coarse hair, it can be manipulated. So I think, if and if I did it at the same angle, I would probably make sure that it's loose enough to where it can transcend. Because when it comes to coarse hair, sometimes it's so great that you can actually just give it the distinct look. So you can't just cut it to go back like that. So it all depends on how much direction you're gonna do. All right guys, so coming along the top area, I just want to like make sure I get that cleaned all the way over. And I'm going to do that same deal where I blue dry the sides just to let it lift up a little bit. And then from there, just do some detailing before I move into the top area. Once again, remember guys, when you're blow drying this hair, you can use the wide teeth of the comb or the small teeth of the comb. And make sure you're controlling the way that hair is going to fall. So just giving it that little bit of direction. I probably stick away, sometimes I know people kind of go with like a, like a brush to come in and actually control that, but then notice with the brush, it's gonna control the hair too much. And you don't wanna over control the hair, you really want it to kind of naturally fall. So that's why we're just being quite soft with it. And sometimes a, a side to side flat wrapping technique works well for hair that's a bit coarser, but you wanna get that smoothness on it. You can flat wrap it from side to side to create a nice, a nice texture with it. All right, gang, I'll pass this to you, Barry. All right, guys, so right now, once again, notice how I tilt the head because I know I'm going to come in and create that texture around the round of the head shape. So I'm starting at the front. Closing that blade as I get right there and guys when we're in vegas i'm going to be going over some of these techniques like this in detail this is just another form of control slicing in a bit when you just think about it like just coming in and just slicing out some of that excess hair that's around the crown then on this opposite side i'm just going to stand on i'm going to turn it a little bit towards you guys and same thing and do we have a question from mm -hmm. uh, yvonne she was just wondering how many years experience you have in the beginning of the series. oh all right Oh, why do you have to ask that question, Yvonne? <laughs> All right. Well, I've been in this industry for about, I want to say, 22 years at this point, you know, going for it. And uh, the thing is, it's like, it's been fun every nick of the way, but it's still a lot of work. But I think persevering through it, you know, and learning to change and evolve with the industry, I think is really key. But for us, that's why knowing the trends that come and go. That's like knowing all the techniques that come and go as well. So, you know, those things will help to kind of broaden the horizon and keep you in this industry a long time. But the number is 22, something like that. Magic number. Magic number. Uh, also, Louise was asking what type of blow dryer that you were using. All right, Louise, that was an Elshin, an Elshin blow dryer. And they're quite quiet. Really love the Elshin just for how quiet they really are with that. 
And DJ, now is there something different that you do when you're working with really blonde hair and you're trying to blend it as opposed to when you're working with darker hair? Uh, yeah, maybe like pay attention. Yeah, <laughs> with blonde hair, with blonde hair, everything pops out fast. I think a lot of times you can't afford to get lost and try to cover it. So it's very key to make sure that as you're working on it, you know, make sure you keep your sections tight and keep yourself detailed. And also make sure that it has always moisturized when you're working. So right now I'm just going with a radial. Just on that top portion of the head. And I'm just taking a notice of the colic, so I'm making sure that I can really see how her hair wants to fall in. All right, once I have that, then I'm just gonna come from this angle, and just taking vertical sections, and then just carving out. Therefore, I'm carving out this way, by right, arcing outside, so it makes the hair wanna hook right back in, which gives her a better blending point. And I think that's really key when you're cutting and you're using these techniques is making sure you know exactly what you're using them for and what they're gonna create for you. Okay, so once again, carving out. And you'll notice how the hair wants to fold for me. So get to the sides, pushing forward. Notice the change because I want that side area to push into that front. So if I want that, I'm gonna slice that hair moving towards, so then it wants to blend coming towards, and you can see how that works as well. We're just gonna repeat the same technique on the opposite side. Guys, ask any questions if you want. It's great to really catch up with you guys. And we wanna start doing more of these, actually, just to kind of like, you know, put some different point of views out there in the industry. I think that things are changing so much, and it's so many cool techniques out there to learn. So I really encourage you guys to kind of keep defining your vision and you know, and put your creativity into your hands, but, but it's good to have like mentors and, and educators out there that's continuing the growth of this, uh, this industry. Now as DJ is working, what I'm doing is just taking a look at how he is shaping the hair, and what I'm gonna be doing is working in with some temporary color on Melissa's hair and really marrying together that vibe of cut and color. It looks great as it is, nice and clean, but what we're gonna do is add a little bit of dimension by playing with some color theory and working in a temporary way because I think as colorists, what we're seeing now is there's so many more ways in which people are more comfortable with tones and, and doing something, but sometimes they want something temporary. So I'm gonna show you guys a way to do some session color a little bit later, and I'm looking at where I'm in a place I'm getting really excited, DJ, because that looks great. All right, so we're just going in with a brick layering technique and just taking out some of that looseness, uh, I mean some of that bulk rather, to create some looseness around that top area. So I'm gonna do that again for you guys. And April's wondering how often you sharpen your shears, DJ? Uh, I do once a year, you know, if anything. For the most part, I, I can go for a long time without sharpening them, just by maintaining them, just taking care of them. And uh, you know, wipe product off your shears, guys. You don't wanna have any buildup on your, on your shears. And, and also, like at the end of the day, it's really good just to kind of you know, clean up your set so you prepare for the next day. Sometimes I know we get busy in the salon and then we kind of forget to go and like wipe off our blades. And you know, you want to do that, that'll help maintain the life of your shares. Also an invest in some good ones, you know. All right, as we come in, then, top, watch the swing, it's just to give it some swing. And so that was brick layering to give it some swing and movement. And it just kind of really exposes the depth of that hair, giving her a really nice feeling with that. We're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side and then just blow dry a little bit. A bit, would you like the color why it's in this? Yeah, you yeah? know, I don't mind coloring when it's a little bit damp. It's great for me. All right, so guys, once I'm done with this area, then um, on that next one, when we come back in, Barry will do some coloring on her and then show you how she's gonna touch this up. All right? Yeah, perfect. So uh, guys, I'm just gonna go through this area right quick, so ask some questions right now. It's your last chance for this session. Oh, okay, we got one. Melinda's wondering, are you cutting into the mid-shaft? Ah, good question. What I'm doing with the mid-shaft, I'm making sure that I don't cut right there because that mid-shaft area is just gonna make that hair do this, cuckoo, like a rooster, so you don't want the rooster, so just go above the S pattern. I always like to bend the head just a bit when you bend the hair, and then just go right above that bend is where I'm maintaining my technique so the hair still has a fall. So uh, Mirna was just saying that you're an architect in the hair profession. Oh, you're, you're saying stuff like that. Dimples coming right, right on out, right on out. Let me get that camera up here. 
Yeah, you see that? <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you very much. Appreciate that. We're just going to do the swing. Coming here. And as DJ said, what we're going to do is take about a 20 minute break and then come back at you with part two. So, you know, have a drink, have a coffee, take a little break in between clients, wherever you are, whatever time zone, and make sure you check back in with us. And again, if you are watching this at a later point in time, you have any questions, just ask us and we'll get back at you. All right, guys, so I'm just going to come around just so you can kind of see that flow of it. And so this is before Barry comes back with it and do the color on it. Just for this top area, just want to give it a little bit of more striking exaggeration by doing just some channeling on the surface, which is going to give her a nice thrasher type of swing with that front area. See, just channeling that in. And then as I come to the front, I'm going to let Larry go to the mirror view so you guys can just kind of see just the type of feeling that it's going to give her. So even if she wears it wet, she moves it to the side. It's going to give her a nice swing, but it's just that structure that kind of gives it that squareness that's happening there, and then she has that movement that's happening on the top. So we're going to finish her in the second segment on our next stream. All right? Thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you in a few. Thanks for checking us out. Main entrance artist, American Salon. Big shout out to Larry Race on the films. And uh, we'll check you guys in a bit, yeah? yeah? 20 minutes. We'll be back. 20 minutes.